Blessed be your glorious name. All right, good morning, everyone. Hope my mic is working here. Good. Greetings. Yeah, greetings. Uh, it's so great to be with you today. My name is Brian Regan. Uh, I'm just so grateful to be able to share the Word of God with you today. Um, I know we don't have much time, so we'll jump right in. If you have your Bibles today, please turn to Mark chapter 2, be in verse 15. Um, and as you know, the theme today will be blessings beyond belief. Um, and I want to begin today by talking about the kind of people God will bless. Um, and Mark provided some in- insight into that. So here we go, Mark 2, verse 15. It says, While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the tax collectors and the sinners, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And so it's, it's really easy to miss what's going on here in this passage. I had to read it a couple times myself. Um, but here we have the Son of, the, of God, the holy, righteous God, eating with ta- tax collectors and sinners, right? The scum of the earth in the, in the time. Uh, back then, tax collectors, they would charge people extra on top of what was required so, just so that they could line their own pockets. Um, and Jesus was eating with these people. And more than that, he was calling them to be his followers. And this kind of reminds me of the upside-down kingdom, right, from before when John was ta- preaching. Um, he, he, he didn't come, Jesus didn't come, the Son of God did not come to f- fellowship with the Pharisees, the most religious people, the most righteous people of the day. Right, these Pharisees, they knew the Bible inside and out. They could s- recite scripture for hours. You know, they had books of the Bible memorized, and they kept the law perfectly, at least they thought they did. But look at, look at who Jesus came to. He didn't come to them. He didn't come to the most righteous people today. He came to the tax collectors and the sinners. And look what he says um, at, at, in verse 17 here. It says, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but I have come to call the sinners. And I love this analogy here of kind of using health uh, as, as a metaphor. right? Because if imagine, picture a doctor giving out medical supplies, checking to see people um, if, if, they need, if they need help. If somebody's healthy and they say, oh, they don't need help, the doctor's going to move on to people who really need the help, to the sick people. And this is exactly what Jesus is doing, except he's not offering medical supplies. He's offering forgiveness of sins. And the Pharisees, they think they don't need to be forgiven, right? They think they're righteous. They have fulfilled the law on their own. They don't need forgiveness from Jesus. And so Jesus is not going to call them. He's going to call the sinners who know that they need forgiveness, know that they need a sacrifice for their sins. And this is also illustrated beautifully in a passage, or excuse me, a parable that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 18, verse 9. So I'll give you a second to turn there. Um, and verse 9 is a great introduction, introduction to this parable that Jesus gives. So we have Luke 18, verse 9. This is addressed to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So now we can really clearly see the difference between the tax collector and the Pharisee here. So the Pharisee is the one who thinks he's a good person. He compares himself to other people, and he knows that he is better. And this is really common today. Um, I know I've done it before. Um, if, and if you, you can just go out on the street and ask somebody if they think they're a good person, and they'll probably say, yes, I'm a good person. You know, I give to charity, I pick up trash, I've never killed anybody, I don't step on puppies. And, and what's more is that they say, if you ask them, do you think you deserve to, get to, 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 uh, to go to heaven? Are you good enough to go to heaven? They'll say yes. And that's exactly what this Pharisee is doing here. Right? He thinks he's righteous enough to get into heaven. But w- let's see what Jesus says about this person, right? Verse 14, I tell you that this man, the tax collector, was the one who went home justified, not the Pharisee. So the Pharisee is the one who God will not justify. The Pharisee will have to bear the brunt of his sin. He'll bear the punishment for his sin. And make no mistake, there is no man without sin. 1 John 1.18 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in, in us. 
But now let's look at the, the, at the tax collector, the other person in this, in this parable. You can look at verse 13. It says, But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now look at the two different attitudes here. We have the sinner who realizes he is not a good person, that he has broken the law of God, and that he needs forgiveness. And all he does is he just begs for mercy. And look what happens. In verse 14, the very next verse, it says, This man went home justified before God, made right with God. You know, his sins are forgiven, and they're no longer held against him. And notice it says he went home justified. So by the time he was already home, he was justified. So right there in that very moment, as soon as he confessed his sins and threw himself on the mercy of God, he was justified before God. And this is the blessing beyond belief that we're talking about here. There's no greater blessing than to have your f- sins forgiven. Right. Psalm 32, right? Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them. And so all we have to do, all God is asking us to do, is that we confess our sin and he will sh- surely forgive us. You know, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to earn our, our way into heaven. We don't have to, you know, be righteous. We just have to for- confess our sins to God and he will forgive. And here's another example, um, even from the Old Testament. This is from uh, the book of Isaiah. Um, and, you know, Isaiah was a prophet, as I'm sure you all know. And as far as people go, he was right up there with the best of them, right? He's a prophet of God, speaking the word of God from his own mouth. Um, so you can't get much better than Isaiah. Um, and l- let's look how he responds to being confronted with God r- God's righteousness. This is I- Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. He says, Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. This is Isaiah speaking. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. So look at this response. He sees God's righteousness and he realized that he is nothing compared to that. He can't, he can't compare to God. But m- what's most important is what happens immediately after that. In verse 6, it says, Then one of the seraphim, one of the angels, flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Notice there is no delay. Forgiveness is immediate. As soon as he confessed his sins, and he realized his own state of his righteousness, God, he was immediately forgiven by God. And this is true for us today, right now. If you humble yourself this very day and confess your sins to God, he will forgive you of your sins. He will bless you beyond belief this very day. And he can do this because Christ died on the cross for, for our sins, for the whole world's sins. And so just don't take my word for it. We're going to read in Romans where, where it says this. And we're also going to read about the blessings that Christ has promised us and that God has promised us if we confess our sins and put our faith in him. So you can turn to Romans chapter 5. Um, we'll start in verse 6. This is a bit, of review of, a bit of review about what we've been talking about. So Romans chapter 5, verse 6. It says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'll pause there. Notice who Christ is dying for. It's the ungodly and the sinners. Okay, but here's the really good part, right, where he talks about how we're going to be blessed. It says, so, chapter 5, verse 9, it says, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, we got a big truck coming through, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So again, I don't know if you caught this, it took me a couple times, but in verse 10 it says, Christ died for us when we were enemies. So we were opposed to Christ. He, he was our enemy. He was our enemy. We're not, we're not on good terms here. Yet Christ still loved us enough to go and die for us so that we can be for, forgiven. And now what Paul is saying is that now that we're, we're not enemies anymore, we're friends with God through what Christ has done for us. How much more will, be, will, be, will we be blessed now that we are friends with God and not enemies? And it doesn't end there. Um, we'll turn to Romans chapter 8, just a few, um, a few pages later in your Bibles. Um, these are the blessings that God has promised us. Um, The whole chapter, you can read it on your own time. I'm just going to talk about a few verses. Um, But these are the blessings that God has promised us through his son, Jesus Christ. 
We'll start in verse 1. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because Christ Jesus, or because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Isn't that amazing? No more sin, no more death. We've been set free from that through Christ. You can skip down a little bit further to verse 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. This is what Christ offers us through his forgiveness on the, or his actions and his forgiveness on the cross. But most incredibly, let's say in verse 10, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. If you put those three together, what do we have? We have, we have power over death in Christ. You don't have to fear death anymore. That we are, if we die, we'll go to be with uh, our father in heaven forever. Um, he'll be in his love and be in his presence until the, forever. You know, there's no end to that. And this, this is not going to change. This is the truth of the matter. This is, you can take it to the bank, take it everywhere. Right? It's not going to change. It doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter if there's a quarantine or a catastrophe or whatever. This will not change. So you can s- set your life on it, put every, bet everything. And I'd say most, well, I'll continue. In verse 16, most amazingly of all, right? Uh, verse 15 and 16, it says, The spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. To sonship. We cry, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So not only do we have fear over death, we are free from sin, we are also children of God with an eternal inheritance that will never fade. Right? It's never going to change. You can take this to the bank. And so I'm going to leave you with Romans, the end of chapter 8 here. Um, Paul asks you a good question in verse 31. He says, What then shall we say in response to these things? Right? What do we do? And Paul continues in verse 31 in chapter 8. He says, he says, If God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one to condemn? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and also interceding with it for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I'll turn it over to John, and we'll continue with the service. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness. Born by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live There is ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting
leaning forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands for victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. All right. Thank you, Brian, so much for that message. Uh, just the pure gospel good news. Um, what more could we think about when we talk about our blessings, right? I mean, we think of our earthly blessings and our family blessings and our food and the air we breathe and the place we live, but nothing compares to what Brian shared with us today from God's Word. And that is that God loves you in Jesus Christ. If you humble yourselves, put our trust in Him, then He will love us and, and forgive us and uh, call us into relationship with Him. So, thanks again. All right, we're going to have a video now. So, for those of you here uh, that can look at a phone or something, you can go ahead and get to our Facebook site. And again, Monica, thank you for sharing some of the blessings that we've had this year at, uh, at Hilltop. And then after our uh, video, uh, Dennis, one of our elders, is going to come up and uh, lead us in communion, and then we'll dismiss. So let's uh, enjoy. Uh, enjoy this video now. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, Awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, 
Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Higher than the mountains that I face. And it's stronger than the power trial and the change, this one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And on and on and on and on it goes, till it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I'll never ever have to be afraid, cause this one It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love, your love. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power. Separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your by the power of your great love. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love, your love. And on and on and on and on it goes. Till it overwhelms and satisfies my
One thing remains. This one thing.